Thank you for joining us in this Roll for Crit review of After Us. In this deck building game, you'll be playing as a tribe of primates in a post-apocalypse Earth, trying to bring victory to your tribe by gaining the most victory points. You'll be adding cards in your deck based on different species of primates, such as gorillas and chimpanzees. Will you be able to bring all the apes together and be stronger, or will ape society be destined to fall apart? The game in this video was provided to Roll for Crit by its creators or publishers. Only the game was provided for the making of this video. After Us wants you to create the greatest group of primates by gathering up stronger ape cards and ultimately gaining victory points, continuing this each round until one player has lapped the board and reached 80 points. Once someone has done that in a round, you will finish out that round and then see who overall has the most points. Now, each round is consisted of three phases. The first phase is assembling your tribe. You'll start off by flipping up four cards from your deck. Each player will start off with mandrill cards, but as the game progresses, you of course will be adding stronger cards to your deck. Now, once you revealed your four cards, each player is going to rearrange them such that they interact in a way by closing or opening different frames. Each card will have frames that are either already closed on them or open ones to the left or right. Your goal is to close as many as possible for only the closed frames will actually trigger. Once you feel comfortable with your layout, you'll start from left to right, top to bottom, triggering each frame. The top row tend to give you resources, while the rows beneath that tend to trade those resources for other commodities, more often than not, victory points. Once everyone has gathered up their resources and finished off all closed off frames, you will then move on to the next phase, attracting new apes. Here, you're gonna take your discs and choose one that matches with the species you wanna purchase from. There are four, there are mandrills which deal with victory points, orangutans which help you earn batteries, gorillas which help you earn rage, and chimpanzees which help you repeat frames. Once you have chosen which disc you wanna use, place it face down in front of you. Once each player has placed the disc down in front of them, you will reveal the disc you played. You will gain the resource printed on the token. So in this case, they will get two rage. Then you'll have the option to buy either a level one or two for the same species that you play the token for. Each one costs either three of a resource or six of a resource, depending on the ape. So in this case, we actually have six of the grain we can spend in order to buy a level two version. Level ones are gonna be stronger than your basic mandrills, while level twos are gonna be stronger than the level ones. You'll take the card you purchase and add it to the top of your deck. This is not mandatory. You may choose to hold on to your resources or possibly you just don't have any resources to purchase cards for that round. During this phase, you may also spend two of a resource to copy another person's disc, which may give you alternate powers, such as being able to gain batteries even though you played the gorilla disc. After all this is done, you can discard your cards and then restart the phase in a new round. Now, there are two other mechanics you need to keep an eye on. The first one involves these batteries. At the start of each game, you're gonna randomly select three of these lost objects to use during the game. These technologies will give you special powers, but cost batteries to use. If you notice the battery symbol in the corner, that will tell you how much they cost. And then over here tells you what phase you can activate that object in. If you're able to pay the batteries, you'll do the effect printed on the bottom of the objects. The other mechanic to keep a note is rage. This is mostly generated through gorillas, but anytime you have at least four rage, you can spend that to destroy one of your cards that you have currently out in play. Let's say we were able to do destroy this card. Not only is it removed from your deck, but you'll get a resource that is whatever printed in the top right corner, adding it to your pool. Other than that, assemble your tribe correctly, gain those victory points, and hopefully, not only will you be the first one to reach it to 80 points, but you'll be able to maintain that lead in order to claim victory in After Us. Solo mode will have you go up against the King of the Apes, represented by their own player board. Now, their setup is gonna be a little different. First, you're gonna take those four action discs and actually randomly choose three and place them face up in front of his board, discarding the last one back to the box. You're then gonna give two resources matching the species in the first slot. Then if the computer is not one of the three random objects chosen at the beginning of the game, you're gonna give the computer to the King of the Apes, which they will have exclusive access to. Now during the game, you're still trying to get more victory points than the King of the Apes while racing to that 80 point threshold to end the game. However, the King of the Apes obviously is gonna work a little bit differently for a solo mode. They will trigger and do their actions before you do during each phase. 
During the first phase, they are going to first gather resources, automatically gaining three of each type, with the exception of batteries, in which case they will gain two. Afterwards, they're going to flip over four cards just like you, but they won't be worried about completing frames, rather simply of just what cards flip out. For every basic Tamarin that flips, they're going to get the resource printed in the top right corner. Next, you're going to look at if the apes are level one or two. For every level one ape that flips, they get three victory points. For every level two ape that flips, they get six victory points. Finally, the advanced apes are going to trigger special abilities based on their species. Gorillas will give rage, mandrills will give victory points, orangutans batteries, and the chimpanzees will re-trigger the basic tamarins. Once the king of the apes has completed their first phase, you will move on to your first phase, where there is one small difference. When gaining resources, you're actually going to take from the king of the apes resource pool before you take from your own. For example, let's say you were able to generate four fruit. You would take the three fruit here from the king of the apes and then take one more from the resource pool. Once you have finished your first phase, you'll then move on to the second phase of adding new apes to your deck. Once again, king of the apes goes first. They're going to decide based on the number of resources they have and from left to right. So they're going to try to buy the biggest card possible. So they'll first look for something that has at least six in a resource. Then they'll look for something that has three. If there's ever a tie, you'll go from left to right. So in this case, the King of the Apes is going to buy a level one mandrel, paying the cost, as well as adding the card to the top of their deck. They also trigger the ability printed on the token. You will still have the option to copy whichever token they choose by spending two resources. You will do the same, completing your second phase, adding a new card if you so choose. And then you will move on to the final third phase. Here, the king is first going to look at their rage. If they have at least four rage, they will spend that rage and destroy one of their cards. Now, they'll start off with starter cards. If there aren't any of the starter tamarins, they'll go to level one and then to level two, taking the card out of their deck and getting the resources for destroying that card. Then they're going to look at their batteries. If they have enough batteries to activate the computer, they will spend that in order to gain the victory points. You'll complete then your resting phase and then start a new round. Keep going until one of you has hit the 80 point marker threshold and see if you were able to take the crown from the King of the Apes. After Us is a deck builder pure and simple. It doesn't have any other mechanics. You are building your deck to gain victory points and hopefully you're the one who ends up with the most at the end. So it's going to need to do some things to make it stand out amongst the crowd of deck builders. One of the most popular game mechanics I feel in recent years. Now, the first thing I think it does really well is its hand of cards. Now, in many other deck builders, you'll play your cards and just be like, all right, I have da, 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 five of whatever my currency is. What can I do with that? You really sometimes feel, especially if you have a lot of the basic cards that you're not really having much agency. You just put your hand down and have number. Here, there's a bit more with trying to match the frames, put them in the right order to get the most benefits. But then maybe sometimes you swap this out because you're like, well, I really want to get that these two together. It doesn't give me any resources, but I'm going to be able to trade for a lot of points. So there is much more thought process put into how you play your cards in a certain order, much more akin to when you have those great turns, especially in a lot of other card games I think of, and you have combos going off. And it feels like you get that reward even with the starting basic cards. So you feel like you actually have some agency and some thought process and reward in how you play your cards, giving you more choices and interesting options with each hand. Now, the second big thing, and this is a minor thing, but I think at this point it needs to be something that's very important to all deck builders, is making it very easy for you to destroy cards. Now, in some other ones, depending on the kind of game, you might have to hope you can buy or purchase one of those cards. Here you have the Rage Meter, and yes, it's mostly facilitated to buying Gorilla cards, Gorilla cards are basically always available, and just simply playing the Gorilla token is going to give you two rage. And if someone next to you plays a Gorilla token as well, well, even without buying a Gorilla card, you can get four rage, destroy a card, making it much easier for you to thin down your deck, get rid of the weaker cards in order to only play the stronger ones. That said, when we come to stronger cards, that's where we have a bit of a problem. You see, basically, there are three tiers of cards. There are starting cards, there's level one cards, and level two. You would think you would want to start off with getting some ones as you make way to two, a uh, usual curve when it comes to the power of your deck. In our first playthrough, that's what I thought. So I was buying cards of whatever I could get, different kinds. I'm like, oh, well, maybe if I get more chimpanzees, I'll get this repeat effect. Well, one player was like, I'm, I'm just going to buy the expensive ones. I'm not going to care about the lower ones. 
he ended the game by a significant margin. And we're like, wow, are they just better? Are they stronger? Did it just work for you? Did you have something going on? He's like, I bought good cards. And we looked it up, and apparently a lot of people seem to feel the same way. And in future games of playing this, that tended to be the case. It really feels like it's honestly better to skip buying if you can't buy one of the level two cards. This is compounded by the fact because they're always available. Deck builders fall into two different kinds. You have the lineup style, which usually is pulled from our main deck and can be random. And people might not like that all the time because sometimes the good card doesn't come up on their turn, comes up on someone else's turn. Here, the same cards are always available. Yes, technically there's different kinds of, of chimpanzees in level two and one, but you can always buy a level two chimpanzee. Same thing for all the other ape species. So this is more akin to something like Dominion when you have piles of cards. The problem is when you have certain piles and you don't have any way for to stop people from buying a certain card or getting whatever strategy they off, it starts feeling like a solved game of simply just get the good thing. And that hurts the agency because earlier when I said how much I liked that you could play your hand in different ways and get that combo-like feeling of trying to match frames, the actual idea of trying to build a strategy and try out different things through games didn't come up. Instead, the opposite occurred. It just felt like buy two and yes, I'm going to put them in order, but I'm not really trying like a heavy gorilla strategy or I'm trying to get a lot of this resource. It really just felt like get level twos and you'll make it to the end because there's nothing you actually like the only player interaction is that being able to buy a copy of whatever their token is that's revealed. Now, I'm usually fine with games that don't have a lot of player interaction. You're sort of solo multiplayer games. But that's because those games usually also offer you to try out different strategies, trying out different board states, and building up something interesting. Here, because it's just buy a level 2 card, really any of them will be fine. Just getting a lot of level 2s will help you hit that max point faster. Uh, I didn't really feel like there was any intrigue or interest in exploring more the game had to offer. Weirdly enough, I felt like I got a bit more of like actually trying to think and strategize in the solo game seemed to have more interaction because the way the solo one works is when you gain resources, you take it first from the king. Because of that, there are times when I was like, well, if I do this, I can take enough resources from him in order to make sure he does not get a level six card. So there was actually me worrying about how the opponent was going to do things and how I should uh, basically react to the opponent's actions rather than just trying to just simply get six of a resource to buy level two. And I wish there was something similar to that here or at least something that slowed people down to make them consider different strategies and maybe level ones when it came to the deck building. But as of right now, like I said, it just felt like even though in the beginning of a turn and when you start playing, you feel like you have a lot more agency and interest in terms of assembling your hand. Afterwards, it does feel like the game's going to start feeling a bit more samey than you would want. Crits and misses for After Us. Crits. I really enjoyed that it wasn't simply just play the cards, but rather you had to care about the order. This gave me a feeling not only of agency and strategy when playing my cards, but made it something much more akin to how you get off a huge combo in some other games, even when you are just starting off with the most basic of cards. I really like how the destroy system works here. It's not simply on a card that prints destroy a card, rather you spend rage. The reason this is important is one, Basically, you can always generate rage. You simply have to play a token, but obviously getting some gorillas will help get more rage quicker. But you don't have to spend the rage right away, meaning you can wait until you destroy the cards you actually want to destroy, rather than hoping that the card that allows for destroying comes up with the card you want to trash. Misses. I feel that the level two cards are too powerful as well as too accessible to players right off the bat. We found out relatively fast that it just seemed to be the winning strategy of just trying to get level two cards. You didn't have to focus on different species or try a unique strategy. Level two cards just always seem to be good. And there wasn't too much of a penalty of even skipping a turn if it meant just buying more level twos. This really felt like all future games really just boiled down to buying a bunch of level twos and hoping your right ones and matching came out better than other players rather than trying to build different strategies based on the different ape species. There is not interaction between other players in this game, 
And while usually that is not the biggest miss for me, combined with the previous miss, I feel like this just removed a lot of the choices you have. So even though I really enjoy the options of trying to make your hand stronger by matching all the frames correctly, it really felt like there weren't any other choices or options rather than hoping all the cards I bought got me to 80 points before anyone else. I think there are some great options here and some cool ideas. However, the final execution, I think it just feels like it's a solved game. If there was a way, I know we, me and my friends talked about of like you had to trade in level ones as well to get a level two or maybe that there aren't always available until maybe a certain number of rounds. Something that switches some things up and forces you to maybe try out some strategies rather than just buying the good cards. This could also come from a bias. As I mentioned, the two deck building types before, I'm much more of a fan of the random one with a one big lineup rather than the set deck. So basically your DC deck building game versus your Dominion. But I, like I said, I don't think I'm alone in finding that the level twos are too strong and too available and there really isn't a reason for you just not to get them. So as of right now, I think this game needs at the very least some kind of expansion to help make sure that it spices up the gameplay. Yes, you can get different techs, but really I felt like they didn't impact the game enough to really make you feel like you're always trying out something new. As of right now, while I do think there's some cool ideas, I just feel like that this game isn't going to last for enough playthroughs for you to stay on your shelf. But you can let me know your thoughts on this if you enjoyed After Us or did you have a similar experience where you just feel like you'd always go after those level two apes. I'd love to hear everything you have to say in the comments down below. But for now, thank you so much for watching this review. I'm Will and this has been Roll for Crit.